Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 16th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Quick apologies. Yesterday I mentioned that today, Monday, would have been my uh, talk here in D.C. Well, it's actually Tuesday, probably today, when you're listening to this podcast. And a link will be added to the Internet Storm Center's website if you want to attend remotely. The talk will essentially cover the last 25 years at the Internet Storm Center, how attacks changed and how this was reflected in some of the data that we are collecting at the Storm Center. At the Internet Storm Center uh, today, we do have yet another diary by Didier talking about the protected feature in Excel spreadsheets. However, this time it's about the modern version, the Office Open XML format. So that's your .xlx file in Excel. Again, the protection here is really just meant to protect uh, spreadsheets from accidental changes. You may just remove the protect statement, which is a hash of the password from the document and unlock the document by doing so. The hashing algorithm also is quite a bit more complex in these modern uh, documents. It uses 10,000 iterations of a salted SHA-512 hash, which of course could potentially be brute forced, but it is much more difficult to brute force than what I talked about yesterday with these 16-bit hashes in old .xls files. However, if you would like to brute force these hashes, Didier did add an additional feature to his tool XML dump. In this new version of the tool, it will actually create an export of all these hashes in Hashcat format. So that way you can just feed that data to Hashcat and then attempt brute forcing, which of course in particular, if you have a list of candidate passwords, may actually succeed. Didier did some tests on a system with an RTX 3080 NVIDIA GPU and did achieve a hash rate of about 24,000 hashes a second. Now this is a decent system to do this kind of password cracking. Also, of course, this does take quite a bit of uh, power, which is probably not unexpected. Diddy privately shared some power usage statistics where the impact of uh, this system actually doing full-time brute forcing is substantial to his home's uh, power usage. And JFrog published an interesting and scary blog post showing how they discovered a classic GitHub token for the Python project in a Docker image. The Docker image was published to Docker Hub and JFrog as a public service it continuously scans any Docker Hub images for these type of authentication tokens. This was particularly dangerous because it was a classic GitHub token. Classic GitHub tokens give complete access to a particular account. They're not as fine-grained permissions as some of the more modern GitHub tokens. What's also interesting is that this token did not show up in the source code. Instead, it showed up in a compiled Python file, so a .pyc file that contained this uh, token. What JFrog suspect happens was that the developer was adding this token to their source code, ran the code, then removed it from the source code again, and then published the Docker container. These .pyc files are created at runtime as you run the Python code uh, whenever the Python code has been altered. But since the developer didn't run the code after they executed, after they removed the token and they did not remove manually the .pyc file, the token was still contained in the .pyc file. Luckily, JFrog was able to discover uh, this token in about uh, 15 minutes. So the exposure was very limited and hopefully, well, this token was not used in the meantime. Of course, I would assume that at this point, the token has long been revoked. 
but NetHacker would have full access to any of the Python source code, also to PyPy and other related projects of the Python Foundation on GitHub. And if you're running Windows Server 2022, there is an issue with this month's patches that Microsoft 365 Defender will somewhat be limited. The network data reporting apparently may not be working. You should see a notice regarding to that in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and this could affect some of the device inventory and incident response functionality. Microsoft is working on an update in a com upcoming release, as they say, but at this point, there is no expected release date for this. Again, it only affects Windows Server 2022, none of the client versions of Windows. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.